Hello welcome, Arzi Shim in the hangar. Today we will hardcore test this Hava Air X1 Pro Max. I already have really high expectations for its following capabilities since I tested these predecessor Hava Air X1. Zero Zero Robotics reached out to me asking if I want to do a review on this. I said, yeah, sure, because your last product was really good. They sent this for free as a review sample. They have no influence on my video. They didn't ask to see this before to approve it. So my opinions here are entirely my own. That's quite important to me. The parts that are shitty about this, I will tell you honestly, because that's my main currency on this channel here is your loyalty and my honesty. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Let's quickly run through the differences. It can follow you now faster. 40 kph up to 60 in extreme situations, but let's call it 40. And I tested this with my bike, rode quite fast and it could follow me even with a bit of wind. This was maxed out at 20, 25 kph and it's really slow. A better camera, it has a 1 over 1.3 image sensor in it. So that means better low light capabilities and you will see it in the woods. It's a 4K or even an 8K 30 sensor. You might have read this on, on their spec sheet. 8K on a 200 gram drone, that's insane. I mostly used 4K and 60 for action. You could also use 4K 120 for slow motion. 200 gram drone, it's safe to fly this anywhere. It has prop guards, as you see, and those prop guards. Zach did my song of Dutch. Good plastic that doesn't break. You can bend it. You cannot really break it. Still, and I don't want to hide this from you. Why do I have two boxes of these? They had to send me a replacement drone because on one of the... Yeah, it was a simple crash. It was nothing harsh on a tarmac or something. Just a simple crash. And when I wanted to fly it again, it made weird things. First I thought it's just a broken prop, that I saw a chipped edge and, and replaced the prop, but really it was a broken motor. So I hope it was just one occasion. These things are meant to crash. This thing, while following me, crashed way more than this, but still, it needs to be able to survive a crash. It now has obstacle avoidance through the main camera, but it also has a camera to the back. It has sensors in the bottom, but not to the side. So you have some kind of obstacle avoidance. But if this flies with 40 kph through the woods, branches appear so fast, the optical avoidance cannot react fast enough. You see that also on DJI drones, if you fly in sport mode, optical avoidance is disabled because it's too slow. So these things must survive crashes and my first thing didn't really survive. That's the only real downside I found while testing it. I have a few other little nitpicky stuff that I will move in the back of this video. There are even different versions. So it's the standard and the Pro Max version. Pro Max is just higher camera quality with 8K and it's quite pricey then. In terms of bundles, I got the cycling bundle, which gives you this cycling themed bag, which is nice. In the standard bundle, you get this fake leather box, which I think I like this better, which is the drone itself. We will talk about the beacon in a minute. The two joystick attachments, five batteries. You should minimum get two or three batteries because flight times are okay, somewhere around the 10 minute marks. Yeah, but if you're out shooting action, you want to have enough of these batteries to swap them in and out. And I've seen there's also a low temperature version of the batteries, which is a bit more expensive. The battery just pops in there. If you short press it, you see it's at 95%. That's a nice touch. You turn it on by long pressing. It has a nice little OLED display. Current mode, 360 degrees spin. <laughs> That wasn't a, a smart thing for me to do. Yeah, so this thing still is all about its autonomy features. It has like 360 spin that you just saw. Cycling mode, ski mode, dolly track, bird eye, orbit, follow, zoom out, hover, indoor follow, cycling mode. The cycling mode is what I missed. It's really easy to 
just swap modes. If you long press this here, you can change from close to far or mid. And flat means the height flat or high. If you want a high angle, there's no low angle on the cycling mode. So this might be all you ask from this drone. But if you also get the little joysticks here and the beacon, and I highly suggest you get the beacon because this beacon, hello, you see a preview now. And this, this thing is so cool. You can magnetically attach. Yeah, you see, he recognized the joystick. I'm now in the single-handed mode. I can yaw it left, right, or go up and down. And if I hold the button in the back, I can tilt it to go left, right, and forward and backward. Kind of like the motion controller on DJI's drones. So the two joysticks have a left and a right one. The left one has the scroll wheel for the gimbal and the right one just has the button. And there's only one way they will connect. So this one will not connect here because it snaps into place magnetically and you can extend it like this. You get a nice standard remote control setup and it, even in my big hands, it makes a good impression. And that's the smallest mode of operation. Pop in your phone here, start the app and have it in the app mode with a large screen uh, with a USB cable. Three or four different modes of operation on this thing, which makes it very flexible. This these modes cannot compete against the DJI drones. And if you consider the pricing, this might look a bit more pricier than uh, entry-level DJI drones. Get really high-level controllers, a good working video range. The main reason to buy this hover drone should be the follow capabilities. None of the DJI drones that I tested had a good follow me mode in terms of like going through the woods. I know there's the flip. I didn't test the flip, maybe it's a good competition to this one here. And this remote is a nice addition. If you use it like I did, go cycling and film action, and then you're on a nice hill and want to film the scenery, you can take this drone out a few hundred meters and take good aerial shots, but you cannot like fly up a mountain two or three kilometers away and dive it or have long flights. This is where DJI is better, in all honesty fold away so nice and easy really great package if you really just have your pockets you can go with this sack here throw the drone in there for the follow me mode put it in your pocket and have a second and a third battery maybe in your other pocket this is the charging hub which i only also highly suggest it's part of the cycling combo or also of the standard combo 65 watts charger if you want to charge batteries with this it now has contrary to the old smaller one this now charges two batteries at the same time if you have a standard 10 or 20 watt charger then it will charge this serial so one after the other just keep that in mind nd filters nd6 is the only one i really need you also get this small pouch here where you could fit in the remote nicely funny enough the old drone perfectly fits into this pouch so that's where my old hover sits now that's two drones following me. This is hilarious. Hope still both of them are here. I will check this now. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> One of them just stood there and lost me. Hello YT, did you lose me? I mean the disadvantage of the white one is it doesn't have cycling mode. Okay, watch out. No, no, this is not good. Okay. Dolly. It was supposed to be a dolly track. Okay, now for a change, the black one crashed. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> so I don't think the dolly track works in that scenario here. Use the cycling mode once again. 
Did you just bump in each other? So there you have it live on camera. Stop it there. Stop it. Stop it, Whitey. Yeah. So there you have your answer. The follow me mode definitely has been improved on the new one. I really like the beacon. And here on my downhill, I noticed that speedy downhill is more difficult for the drone, uh, harder to avoid obstacles because on the same track going uphill I had fewer crashes with the Pro Max but there each of the crashes was not a problem and I hope this stays this way. Here another one. Here and by the way one additional bonus of having the beacon on the handbar of my bike is it acts as a microphone. It's not the best, it still picks up some wind noise and bumps from the right here, but it's a nice addition. So, yeah, it's a good microphone. Just say no good, yeah? This is dolly track in high mode and previously I had not so good feelings about dolly track because of the missing rear sensor. Now it has a rear sensor. I can press pause at any time and get manual control like left, right, up and down, which is nice. <laughs> he flew right through it, okay? Battery critical. Please return home or take manual Low. control. Ought to return in 10 seconds. Returning to the Please beacon point. Which is the beacon is my location, so if I run away quickly, <laughs> like so, it will follow me, which is really, really nice. <laughs> it really returns to the beacon. Let's not harm the battery too much. Yeah, so the controls, those joysticks, they give you a lot of flexibility when you run out in the wild. Okay, I made some notes what I like and what I didn't like. Image quality, yeah, the 
the image quality is the real step up here. It's if you need it, it's even 8K 30 capable. Nobody should really need 8K, but you know, for some reason I had the old drone in the vertical shooting mode. That's something that the new drone also can do for you if you need to post on Insta or TikTok or whatever. Image quality, really nice. And I really liked the little beacon here. This alone makes your life easier because the autonomy features of this are really good. It follows you all on its own. But what if this thing does something stupid or dangerous? Maybe it flies away from you, filming you in dolly track mode, but you see it will back up into something. It shouldn't, but it could, and it could get dangerous. Or maybe it heads towards traffic and you want to save it from it. Here with the beacon, you can just press the pause button. If you don't have the beacon, you need to wave stop or hold your hand below it. So this gives you just more control. And that's very nice. The little home is the return to home button. And the return to home button returns to this beacon. So this beacon communicates with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It will not return to start location, but return to the beacon, which is also important. Uh, if you're on a boat, for example, this thing doesn't have GPS, so it doesn't have GPS return home. Uh, relies on its movement data and on the Bluetooth signal from the beacon. And while this screen is very small, it helps you, like on an action cam, to frame your shot and to see if it still follows you, if it still has kept track of you. I also like the speed capability, so it's now faster. And in my direct comparison with the old one, I saw that this crashes not as often as the old one does. Now let's talk about a few of the downsides that I found. The most obvious downside for me, maybe I was just unlucky, but on a small crash, a motor died. Huh? This can happen to any drone any times. It shouldn't happen to those durable drones. I checked the motor and I don't feel any weird resistance, nor do I see any any dirt or debris in the windings. No damage at all. Cable is okay and it... Abnormal motor start. Please check the motor and prize leaf. You saw that this motor shortly spun up but stopped immediately. Swapped this prop but this didn't fix the problem. They, of course, because they want this review, were fast to ship me a replacement drone. I don't know how good their sales and after sales support is. Yeah, you can buy something like Hovercare, an insurance to cover you in such cases. The other little thing that I didn't like, I searched for replacement props and saw it's $24 for replacement for their repair kit. And the repair kit is really a few props, a screwdriver and those plastic parts here. And that's a bit harsh. They should really just sell the props on their own and like four props for $5 or something like this, but not 25. That's, that's not okay. The accessories are really expensive, but that's often the case with such products. And buy it all in the bundle, it's way cheaper then. Things you need, you need lots of batteries if you are serious about your filming. I'd say three batteries minimum. The drone is loud, this loud whiny sound because it's tiny props. So that might intimidate others, even though it's well hidden and guarded behind those protectors. And the video range is not the best. So if you come from a DJI drone and expect like 10 or 15 kilometers of range of perfect smooth video transmission, I didn't max out the range, I think, but I had it stutter in like 20 or 30 meters already. So I was a bit meh about the video range. So that's not the biggest strength of them. And it's especially true if you use your phone, although I have quite a powerful phone here, the OnePlus 12, the, the video transmission is also in, in close range. It's, it's stuttery and not a nice experience. Okay, I think that's all. I told you about the weak spots about this, which there are not too many. And as I said, you should get this mainly if you have the follow modes in mind. For everything other, I still probably would go with the DJI drone. Sorry, Hover. It's especially the drone. It, it seeks its niche. The follow mode is better than on DJI. Most DJI drones are far more damaged if they crash as often as this thing can do. Yeah, hope you liked my honest take on the Hover Air X1 Pro Max. That's, that's the name. Should probably just put a number in it, like Hubba 1, 2 or 3 or something like this. It sounds better maybe. Let me know in the comments what do you think about these products. Maybe you already have one. How many crashes did it survive until it really broke? Or is it as sturdy as I think it should be? What kind of videos do you shoot with the follow drones? Uh, send me some videos, some links to your videos and I 